When I was eight years old, I was introduced to the hasty exit. It came several hours after a particularly violent fight between my mother and stepfather. In response to this most recent beating, my mother told me, I have had enough. This meant that we were moving. Moving, in this case, consisted of throwing clothes, both hers and mine, into a single suitcase and carrying that suitcase from our low-rent apartment complex to the city bus stop. And it was on our way to the bus stop that I realized in the mad rush to get out of our apartment, I had left behind some things which were very important to me. At that moment, the thought of not seeing my small collection of trinkets and mementos again was far more distressing to me than wondering where we would spend that night. Which strangely makes sense if you consider that once chaos becomes the norm, then chaos is actually normal. I didn't have to worry for long. After a time, my stepfather managed to find us. He apologized, and we ended up going back to our apartment. Over the years, this sequence of events would play out again and again. He would beat her, we would leave, and eventually, we would go back. And this is why I kept the box. I found the box at an army surplus store I frequented during my many unaccompanied walking trips around downtown Iowa City. It was small, about the size of a lunchbox. It was made out of metal and painted that distinctive military shade of green known as olive drab. I thought it looked kind of tough, and it seemed to be the perfect size for what I needed. When I got the box home, I filled it with all the things I would want to have with me the next time my mother and I had to leave in a hurry. It was mostly letters, postcards, and photos of friends from school. Growing up, I moved a lot, so I had often found myself saying goodbye to school friends. So those letters and photographs were the last connection I had with people I knew that I'd never see again. I packed other things too, an arrowhead that I thought was cool, a piece of polished petrified wood because I thought it was worth money. There was a pocket knife that one of my mother's old boyfriends had given me when I was five or six and some band-aids because, well, you never know. As the years went by, I put new things in the box, but because it was small, this meant that other things would have to come out. Many times I would empty it out onto my bed just to look over everything. These were times when I would make the difficult decision determining what was important enough to go in the box, because once something came out of the box, I knew that I ran the risk of never seeing it again after making the next hasty exit. How many times did I grab the box from under my bed after a night of violence? I don't remember, but having it was a big deal. It made me feel more prepared for the unknown. It was probably not so much about the various things that I kept in it, as it was about having a sense of control over situations which were completely out of my control. The best part of this story is how it ends, how I was able to go from being that small, scared kid to who I am now. Years ago, I realized that I was in charge of how my story turns out. That is when I began to write the story, instead of letting external circumstances write it for me. And because I continue to write it, I do my best to ensure that every chapter is amazing.